Hello and welcome to this online tutorial on gestational diabetes mellitus. Today I'll be guiding you through this educational session, helping you master topics ranging from dietary strategies to physical activity recommendations for gestational diabetics. When you stop this recording, please take a moment to leave a comment on what you thought of this presentation and also what you've learned. So let's go ahead and get started. What is gestational diabetes mellitus? Gestational diabetes, or GDM, refers to a high blood glucose level, or really any glucose intolerance within the cells, of persons experiencing gestational diabetes during their pregnancy, but typically these people have not experienced diabetes in the past. And we've listed on the bottom four key strategies for a healthy pregnancy under GDM conditions. These strategies include achieving a target weight gain, maintaining an appropriate physical activity level, following a well-balanced diet, and obtaining glycemic control through a consistent carbohydrate intake. So let's talk about achieving healthy weight gain during pregnancy for women with gestational diabetes. It's important to note that we do not recommend weight loss for any expecting mother. At a minimum, women with gestational diabetes should be consuming about 1,700 to 1,800 kilocalories per day. We ask these women to weigh themselves regularly each week and preferably at the same time each day to get a more accurate assessment of their weight gain. And if you look at the three scenarios in the chart below, we list when weight is above target, weight is on target, and when weight is inadequate and we give you three nutritionally appropriate responses or guidelines to follow. For example, when overweight and pregnant, women are encouraged to maintain their regular eating patterns, but to limit their portion sizes and to keep the number of snacks at two per day. We encourage these women to substitute their high fat and high calorie foods with foods such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low fat dairy, and lean meats. Not only is diet critical to monitor, but also physical activity levels. Women with gestational diabetes mellitus should work on obtaining about 30 minutes of low to moderate activity at least three times per week. Some suggested activities include prenatal aerobics, walking 15 to 20 minute miles, swimming, stationary biking, and jogging. It's also important to emphasize drinking at least eight cups of fluid per day, wearing loose and comfortable shoes and clothing, and then allowing sufficient time to warm up and cool down. Women should also avoid heavy weight lifting, scuba diving, anaerobic exercise, and any activity with increased risk of abdominal trauma if they're pregnant. On this slide, you'll find several strategies for addressing excessive weight gain in patients with gestational diabetes mellitus. As it shows here, patients should be encouraged to decrease portion sizes, adjust their meal plan to three small meals coupled with two to four snacks, explore ways to replace high calorie or energy dense foods with a more nutritious and low cal option, and to engage in at least 30 minutes of safe physical activity. In addition to dietary and lifestyle modifications, patients should check their blood glucose levels regularly, especially with patients with gestational diabetes. In fact, glycemic control is a top priority for these women. If you look at the chart below, you'll see blood glucose ranges for different time periods, specifically for fasting periods, one hour after a meal, and two hours after a meal. You should encourage your patients to keep a record of their glucose meter readings and daily food logs to track the amount, time, and location of their meals. The time is particularly important because a lot of women have insulin resistance in the morning, suggesting that a low carbohydrate breakfast is advisable. So this concludes our excerpt on treatment of gestational diabetes mellitus. If you want some more information related to GDM, go to our website at www.nutritionandmedicine.org and for free you can find some information on topics such as diagnostic guidelines, target weight gain, carbohydrate counting, incorporating insulin, and returning to metabolic homeostasis post-pregnancy. So thanks for listening and check back for more tutorials in the near future.